uh, and he's going to share with you how he's used volume in his trading feels like it's the best indication of future price movement. Uh, so we've got a great crowd here in the room. I'm sure you know just turned uh, two o'clock Eastern here, so I'm sure that we'll be um, getting some more people to join us. But we are going to be recording today's event, so we'll try to get you a copy of the recording as soon as possible uh, following the session. But uh, Nigel, we appreciate you being here, and Randy as well. Uh, for helping to uh, support today's event and be a part of it. So guys, uh, at this time, we will go ahead and turn things over to you. One last thing, just to kind of give Nigel an idea of um, who who's in the room, what, type in what you guys are actually trading. So again, type in what you're actually trading, what you trade primarily, just to kind of get an idea. We've got Forex, Forex, Forex options, futures, ETFs, options, options, Forex, crude. Okay, very cool. So. Um, that should give you an idea. We've, we've got, looks like we've got a pretty, pretty well balanced room between stocks and options, forex, futures, binaries, all across the board. So, Nigel, thanks again for being a part. Uh, it's always a pleasure having you here, and I'll turn things over to you. Thank you very much, Morgan, and uh, good afternoon, everybody in in America. Although I'm English, I've been uh, down in Palm Beach since uh, January the fifth, uh, keeping out of the horrible weather in England and the horrible weather that you've had up north and it's uh, I've got to tell you I love it down in Palm Beach in Florida heaven on a stick so welcome we've got an hour and or any time that we run over that for me to take you through my journey in trading my discovery in in trading and um, I hope that it will enthuse you and open your eyes and give you a wow factor at the end of this presentation there is an offer. It is a very, very, very cheap offer from Hawkeye to you guys today, um, which also includes a two-hour mentoring session. So I'd uh, hold on till the end, and uh, it's less than uh, a dinner for two with a good bottle of wine in a steakhouse. So hold on for that. First of all, let me answer a few questions. Uh, a lot of people will say straight away and type in, there is no volume in Forex. Well, there is, because we can run tick data into Forex price and into Forex tick charts. And that will give us approximately about a 90% handle on the volume. So uh, let me overcome that question straight away. And the second question I want to overcome straight away is this. And that is, if this is so good, why am I sitting here talking to you today about it? Well, it's very simple. I enjoy it. I had a business. I've been trading 28 years. Before that, I had some magazine business in England, 300 odd people working with me. Sold it, got into trading, and trading is very lonely. I'm a, a people's person. I enjoy speaking to people. And just out of chance, Hawkeye um, morphed itself because it's my own trading indicators that I designed for myself, morphed itself into a product. And I must say, I have a wonderful time with it. I've got customers all around the world, um, you know, whether you say Australia, Japan, Hong Kong, wherever. I mean, I've just been down to Uruguay, got a major customer down there who trades live cattle uh, because he's one of the big cattle boys down there. So it gives me a lot of fun. So that's why I do it. Um, it wasn't a business that I set out to be involved with. Trading is my main business. But I really enjoy this. And Randy, my partner, is the CEO of Hawkeye. He runs Hawkeye on a day-to-day -day basis. And they roll me out when it's necessary. So let me just start. First of all, there's the normal disclaimer. This is for education purposes only. I am not licensed to give trading advice. It is education. If you're unhappy with this, please leave the room. I assume that by staying, you acknowledge and accept this disclaimer. So let me tell you what we're going to do today. I'm going to give you a small introduction to volume. And I don't want to spend too much time on PowerPoints. Uh, you know, I've sat your side of the fence. And I've got to tell you, I think they're boring as hell. So I'm going to rattle through the bit of the PowerPoint that I have to do. And then I'm going to move over to my TradeStation platform and go through as many chart setups that you call in. So. There can be no fuzzing. I'm not setting stuff up that just looks good in the presentation. Whatever you call, I'll put up and we'll show you the volume interpretation and the leading edge that volume gives you, of volume and how you can see that the ways that a market moves, you know, particularly for stock trading and future trading, 
um, not so much on the Forex market. There is uh, five phases of market. There's price accumulation, price move, price distribution, then it returns back to fair value, which is normally higher than the original accumulation area, and then accumulation takes place. And that's why we get the zigzags in the market going up and down. Now I'm going to show you the application of volume, and then there's going to be some closing thoughts. And of course, the most important part of the whole day or whole presentation is the Q&A session. Yeah, just keep typing those Q&As in. Randy, my partner, will be there. I will be asking for questions. I'm working only on one monitor, so he'll be, be uh, reading them to me and uh, we'll be able to handle these. So let me just give you an introduction to volume and traditional trading. You know, between 70 to 80% of all traders are failing. And the reason that they're failing is because they're using traditional trading strategies, MACD, Stochastics, Bollinger Bands, Elliott Waves, et cetera, et cetera, moving averages. They've all been around a long time. There's hardly any new technical analysis out there. Maybe Tom DeMarc was the last guy who brought in you know, the s sequential setups, et cetera. But there isn't anything that's really rocked the boat. And if any of you have read any of the old books like Reminiscences of a Stock Trader, the guys who used to trade in the 1930s and go to the ticker tape shops and just read the ticker, all they were doing was reading volume, volume and price. That's all they were doing. So traditional trading has that, and they don't work. I've got to tell you, they don't work. Everybody now around the world sees the same thing at the same time. You know, we're all looking at the same data. You've all got the same indicators on, OK, you're all hunting for the right K to put in your stochastic, or you're looking for the right moving average pair crossover. And when they do, everybody jumps in. And that's why you're taught these days to wait for the breakout and then buy the pullback, and wait for the pullback and then buy the pullback, because there is no attendant volume on the breakout. Now, for those people who knew anything about W.D. Gann's work, W.D. Gann did a lot of squaring time and price. It took time for price to catch up with itself. Because in those days, news went by the wire from New York, Chicago, Kansas City, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Japan, across the world to London and back again. And I'm doing some, some interesting development work. I believe that it's squaring price and volume. So you need so much volume to go into so much price, but that is something that I'm working on at the moment. But I have to tell you that the traditional strategies don't work. And that's why volume is absolutely paramount. It's the only leading indicator, guys. It just tells you what the professionals are doing. It signals price move before it happens. Markets have to go through accumulation before they break out into trend run. And just think of it. Markets are only in trend run about 30% of the time. The rest of the time, they're in congestion and accumulation. And those are the areas that you need a high skill set to be able to trade, the congestion areas. And the signals market intent. It tells you the bias of the market. It tells you what's happening. All other indicators, in my opinion, are lagging. And the key factor for me is volume on triple time frames. It absolutely nails it, day in, day out, triple time frames. So I'm always looking at my fast time frame, my middle, and my slow. And that works like this. Let's say, for example, you're trading a five-minute chart. I double it, 10 minutes and 20 minutes. I look at my five minutes, my 10 minutes, and my 20 minutes. If I'm trading longer term, which I, I do, um, I look at my 480 minute on the Forex 960, and I look at a day, only because you can't in TradeStation double 960 up. Otherwise, I would. But I'm always doubling up, and exactly the same on my tick charts, which I shall come to later. So let me tell you how I became a trader. As I mentioned earlier, I had a very solid publishing company in London. I sold it and, uh, and was uh, invited to join the America's Cup team as a director when it was out in Australia, you know, the big sailing race. 
And I went out there and did that. And whilst I was away, I gave a stockbroker some money, about uh, 300 odd thousand pounds in those days, and came back. And over lunch, he told me he'd lost the whole bloody lot. And I thought he had uh, ripped me off. So I started to get all his um, trading notes and started to go through all, all, all the tickets. And I thought, this is easy. Goodness, this is so easy, this trading. And having had a company with a, you know, 300 odd people working there, suddenly I thought, you know, what's the difference between one contract and 100 contracts? You don't need to, to employ anybody. So I started to trade this and uh, was absolutely seduced by it. And I've got to tell you, I was terrible. I was absolutely awful. And the money that the broker took to lose, I sort of doubled that in about a third of the time. And I even reached a stage, and I was primarily trading gold and silver then, on a chart paper. I had a long table, rather like a wallpaper table. I know I don't look old, but I'm 65, so I started back in 87. And uh, computers weren't out. Um, and the first, the real big thing was when Radio Shack brought out a handheld uh, calculator that you could do a moving average on. But when I started, it was, uh, he had to phone the broker, then you phoned back and complained about the fill that he gave you, and it, it, it was horrendous. But I was absolutely terrible, and I reached the stage where if my logic was telling me to buy, buy it, I would sell. And I did that for about two weeks, and I did quite well. But, but you can't leave your, live your life like that, so I thought, I've got to stop, and I've got to find out what the professionals do. So. Realizing that you have to be a loser first, and I, I hate the word loser, but you lose money. It's part of your entry into being a trader. It's part of the cost of, of entry. And one of the things that I read, I think it was a couple of years ago, was very, very interesting. I was reading, I think it was the Sunday Times in England at the weekend, and they were talking about electrical apprentice, and they were saying that, Something it was huge, like 35% of electrical apprentices drop out of the apprenticeship program. Why? Because they get a belt uh, from the electricity, and then they become hesitant and too nervous to actually become a great electrician. And I thought, wow, that's so similar to trading. Uh, you do have to be a, a loser first. You do have to lose money. I haven't met anybody who's straight out of the gate um, and been successful. You know, it's part of lose uh, of of learning your your craft. And one of the things that I do mention is that you do have to do work on yourself. You do have to do mental strength. Um, you've got to read books like Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas or uh, Trade Your Way to Financial uh, Freedom by um, Dr. Van Tharp. At Hawkeye, we have just launched Hawkeye Mindset, which if you go to HawkeyeMindset.com. We've just teamed up with a guy who's uh, uh, out of um, Santa Fe, and he's got a PhD in psychology and is a Hawkeye trader, and he did his PhD, I believe, in, in trading, and we run a course, or he runs a course on that. When you start out trading, you think it's 90% indicators, 10% you. I can assure you, after a couple of years, you'll know that it's 90% you, 10% indicators, because you screw it up with opinions, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going a little fast because I want to get into charts. So what did I do? I sat down and I thought, how am I really going to learn this? So I thought, well, I've got to go to where the experts are. So I treated it like a job, and I went to the London Stock Exchange, and I went there for two weeks. I went there first thing in the morning. I treated it as a full-time job. And it was uh, obviously before the bin Laden problems, so you could just go in and watch the guys on, on the floor trade. And I went out with the um, traders at, uh, uh, after work. I went to the pub and had a couple of pints of beer with them. Even in those days, the stock market closed at lunchtime, and everybody went to the pub for a sandwich and a beer. I really got to know them, and I tried to find out what was their edge. And I really worked hard at this, and I found it. And the missing link was the pit trader's advantage. And the pit trader's advantage is accountability. You know, most of us have turned the spare bedroom into a trading room. And most of us have no accountability 
a part to ourselves and obviously our partner. And I can assure you, most of us have misled our partners on how well we're doing. Um, so the accountability was a factor that I saw that was very important. You know, they all had a boss. They had to, at the end of the day, show the boss what they'd done. And again, a lot of traders, and I was one of them, went through the rabbit in the headlight syndrome where you just sat there all day and couldn't pull the trigger. And at the end of the day, you just kicked the cat, went for a walk, couldn't believe how stupid you were in not taking the trades. Isn't it interesting that you can be a fantastic hindsight trader, live edge of the market, every nerve in your body, all your strengths and weaknesses come and fight with you. You know, this is the best game in town. It's you against you. They had free money. We can't do that. The free money is the, the spread and the offer, the bid and the, bid and the offer. So a lot of those could do arbitrage and get in there and work on that free money. And they could survive on it because they were doing big lot numbers, big stock numbers, and they could just do the spreads. But here is the important bit. What they could do that I couldn't do was they could feel the market. In other words, they could feel the feeding frenzy. They could see and feel the big orders come in. They knew who the big orders were from. They could ride on their coattails. They knew where the professionals were buying and selling the market. And that, I've got to tell you, is volume. And that was the aha moment. And I went home, and I remember I got a, a house on the Isle of Wight, which is uh, just off the coast of England uh, in the English Channel between England and France. And it's a, it's a very beautiful place with lots of lovely, lovely walks on the hills. And I went for a walk that weekend, and I thought, that's what I've got to do. I've got to follow volume. I had no idea of volume. I'd just been trading moving average crossovers, and um, that was about it. So I knew the volume was the key, and I started my journey on understanding volume. And that took me to the grandfather of volume, Richard Wyckoff. It's very interesting that you know the, he traded in the 1930s, and he studied volume and price. I find it fascinating that out of the 1930s, you've got the three great traders which are still uh, revered today, which is Wyckoff, Elliot of uh, Elliot Wave, and GAN, and um, I started really studying volume and price. And I went over, I got on the plane, I discovered where the Wyckoff family were, they were in Phoenix in Arizona. I went over there, found them in a small little shopping mall in the corner, they had a, um, a small little printing business, and I managed to get a copy of his original course notes. Put them in a U-Haul trailer, took them back to England, and devoured them, absolutely devoured them. And as I was doing that, TradeStation brought out super charts. And uh, do you, if you remember going back, any of you in the room, it was called Amiga in those days, super charts. And you could start programming. So we started to program. I found a guy who could uh, do some programming. We started up. But there was a big difference. In conventional volume spread analysis, it doesn't consider the open. And I alluded right at the beginning of my talk to you that time wasn't important in those days because data took a long time to be disseminated around the world. Well, now everybody sees everything at the same time. And I think that it is paramount to look at the opening of a bar as well as the closing of the bar. Because it's very similar to an auction. You know, if an auctioneer stands up and he says, this is 100 bucks, and no hand comes up, it goes 90, 80, 70, 60, 4, 50, 40, 30, down to 20, somebody's hands comes up at 20, it's gone down 80% from the original consideration of fair value by the auctioneer it'll probably only get up to 60 before it's co closed out. Again, if he opens the bidding at 100, it goes down to 80. It means that there are avid buyers in, in the room, and the price will probably run up to 140, 160 plus. So that's what I think it's, it's very similar to, is the auction. 
it sets the bias for the session. Now, before I get into the application of volume, because now I'm going to go over two charts and take you through what's happened today, what's happening on any stocks, any commodities, any futures that you call in, I'll put them up and we'll go through because it's far more interesting than me just sitting here and burbling away to you. Um, the Hawkeye algorithm does over 300 calculations per bar. And what I have done, I've broken them down into groups of five. So it's, it's volume over 20 bars weighted in groups of five. So it goes 20 to 15, 15 to 10, 10 to 5, and the last five bars have weightings on each individual bar. But what I also do is, and I'm, I'm going to confuse you here, and I don't mean to confuse you, I'm just trying to tell you what's under the uh, hood of, or the bonnet of the car, as we say in England, you say hood in America. What I'm looking at is the standard deviation between the open, the high, and the low, the standard deviation between the open and the close, the standard deviation between the high and the low, the standard deviation between the close, the high and the low. I put those all in the mix. I look at the amount of volume that's run in. They're all weighted, and that's how it comes up. Now, bear with me. I'm going to, I'm a computer dummy. I'm now going to try and get my trade station up. And you should all be seeing that now. If you're not, would somebody, Randy, if you're not seeing that, would somebody come in and tell me? Okay, so I presume that you can all see this. No, but we can't this, see it yet. Okay. Does it come through? Not yet. Okay, should be seeing it now. No, nope. there it goes. You should be seeing it now. It's just okay. You're good now. Yep, got it. Okay, thank you. The volume algorithm that I'm going to offer at the end of this uh, presentation is this algorithm down here, and I'm going to take it through, and it also includes the about in a moment, and these magenta bars as well. Let's do the easy bit first. The magenta bars are wide bars. They're twice average true range over a 20-bar period. And about 80% of the time when that happens, you'll see price try to go back inside the range of the bar, like it's done here, like it's done here, like it's done here. So that is included in the volume algorithm. And these yellow dots are Hawkeye pivots. They're Hawkeye isolated highs and lows. And what generates it? this dot is when the high and the low is higher than the previous high and low and the next high and low. So it's like an island reversal. Okay, And what do we expect when we see those? We expect three, five, seven bar reversals off them. And you can see here, for example, when, they, when you're in trend run down, each high is lower than the previous yellow pivot, et cetera, et cetera comes up here, pivot high, comes down five bars, goes up. That's a phantom. I do that later and go through that with you. But this is the algorithm. And I've got it on, on, on a long-term chart just, just to show you. And then we'll start nailing this down. So start sending in requests to Randy on markets that you'd like me to look at, and I will go to them. The three colors, they're pretty obvious. Green is buying, red is selling, and white is no demand. So when we come up to the top of this bar here, we can see right at the top, we have no demand. No demand after that pivot. And then we get the selling coming in, etc. And then it comes down, what are we looking at? Gold here, We comes down here, and you can see the accumulation coming in down the bottom and that price move going up. And at the end of the day today, or the end of the week, it looks as though we'll be having some red volume in, which is precursored by looking at the daily. You can see that selling volume 
is coming in on the daily as well. And that happens time and time again, and it means that it's reverting back into the monthly direction. And remember what I said, off these little yellow dots, you get three five-bar reactions. One, two, three. That bar there on the monthly is 50% of an isolated high. If the next bar is down lower, it's going to put a yellow dot in there. So the market's behaving exactly as it should do. Markets are very efficient. They're not random. People say price is random. I, I totally disagree. Once you understand volume, they're not random at all. They're absolutely logical. And that's why I call it forensic analysis, not technical analysis. You've got to look and see exactly where the professionals are buying and selling this market. So we can go around and have a, let me look at some stocks here. Let's put Netflix up, for example. So you can see on the monthly, the accumulation came in down the bottom, right down the bottom here, selling, selling, selling. Accumulation right down here after that narrow bar accumulation pushing the prices up. That was on a monthly. Now we come on to the weekly. And also remember, the faster the time frame you trade, and as I said, I think earlier, I've had hundreds of Hawkeye users around the world now, and I literally mean hundreds and hundreds and hundreds in Australia, in Singapore, Hong Kong, China. You know, you name it, there's a Hawkeye user. And the one thing that I see from all of these traders who either come to my seminars or I do one-on-ones with them are that they choose the wrong time frame to trade. Uh, it's very difficult to trade these fast time frames. And it's a bit like riding a horse. You would expect to ride a horse straight away in the Kentucky Derby. But then... You expect to be able to trade a five-minute chart straight away. And I've got to tell you, that's a highly skillful art form to do. And that's why I try and get people to go out to the most, the slowest time frame that they can go to that their, their, their money management will allow. But anyway, I digress. So here's Netflix. So you can see the price is stalling out here. We've got a yellow dot on, on our weekly. And you can make this any time frame. We'll make this faster in a moment. And you can see that that's pushing it down. Red selling volume comes in yesterday, uh, last week rather. But if we look across here onto our daily, look what we've got. There is the forensic analysis and there is the selling coming into this market. And we will see where it goes. Now the overall bias is to the upside. So is this a termination of uptrend or is it a pause in uptrend? Because remember, the markets can only do one of six things. They can trend, they can trend pause, they can have congestion entrance, congestion exit, trend reversal. That's all a market can do. And if you know where you are at any one stage in that market, you have safety. And for example, let me just show you on this, if I can just put this up, this is when we do the mentoring, if you decide to become part of a Hawkeye volume user, I show you how to build your understanding of the volume and the trend around using a dot. And the dot gives you a secret. It tells you that, for example, the dot's gone flat here. You've gone into congestion. There's your congestion pivot there. There's your congestion pivot low. And there's your breakout. And you're going into congestion again. That's what we teach when you become a Hawkeye user on our volume seminar workshop that we do. I think it's on the 29th of this month at 8 a.m. Eastern, and Randy will tell you and post a link for you on that. So let me just stat that off for a moment. So there it is there, and we can take this down into any other time that we want, and you'll see it time and time again. Let's take, take it, um, I thought we were on Netflix. I'm on a different, no, oh, is that Netflix? Oh, yes. So let, let's take this down to a different time frame. Let's take this down into an intraday time frame. And let's say we make it, I don't know, that'll do, 10 minutes. So there's 10 minutes. We take this one down to 20 minutes.
and this one will come down to 40 minutes. And I don't care what it is, it'll be the same setup on any stock that you send in to me. And I'm going to move off stocks shortly and then come back. It's coming in now. There, now I can see can it. Can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Can you, can you just tell me if everybody can hear me? Are they doing that audio? Yes, they can hear Come you on. now. Okay, guys. Well, that was nice, uh, 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 stressful time. Um, nothing to do with us. It was an Omnovia problem. Had to reboot, re-back in, and uh, we've lost half the room. So there we go. So let me just try and carry on, and I've rather lost my, my tempo and my flow, but uh, um, let me pick it up, and excuse me if I'm not going as uh, well as I was, but I'll pick up speed soon for you. So we were looking at Twitter, and uh, you can see again that the professionals are selling into this on a 20-minute chart down here. There we've got the pivot high pushing it back down, so we know that's going to happen. There's a pivot low also that's done a triple bottom here. Can you see all the yellow dots across? So unless there's some volume pushing this one down, we would expect the faster time frame to turn around. Now, I know that whilst we were down, there were people talking about the E-mini. I just want to show the E-mini to you for a moment uh, in tick form. So the people who are on MT4, etc. and I know that Randy has typed in the Hawkeye volume algorithm is available and all the Hawkeye indicators are available in MT4, MetaTrader 4, um, TradeStation, Ninja will have eSignal up and running uh, within the next few weeks of multi-charts to follow. But this is something that I'm really very proud of and I've got this on stocks intraday. I can use this on any instrument I like. It just seemed ludicrous to me that you would trade the same time frame day in, day out. So I worked out something called the gearbox and gear changer. And this tells me each day what speed to trade the market at. So it's telling me today for the ES, it should be 6512 for the slow time frame. It should be 3256 three, for the middle time frame. And fast time frame is 1628. And we can do this on Forex, stocks, etc., etc. And I just, just want to show this to you. And I know that you're saying, well, you're, you're not getting these indicators, but I just wanted to give you a taste of what is available um, after you've mastered volume, how we tie it all in. So this line shows the start of, of the day. And you can see that we had a little downtrend that came in, that came in uh, uh, just before 10 o'clock Eastern time. Of course, there was news out then. And then the market comes down, and then you get this big scion dot telling me that there's a volume roadkill. I call it roadkill because uh, I like to think of vultures. Uh, they just sit on the top of street lights across the desert, you know, just waiting for roadkill, and they get down. And as traders, we should wait for roadkill. Patience is one of your biggest tools in trading. So you can see that my analysis here. Straight away, I go to my slow time frame. I can see that I'm in congestion. I can see this is the Hawkeye volume algorithm that I'm on this 6512 chart is in. And you can see that it's being pushed up. And you can see here that the market is starting to go up. The trend dots have gone white. I mean that there's some volume coming in. And sure enough, boom, off it goes. So that is an indication of how you can use the volume of triple time frames one, two, three, to build up your forensic analysis of what's happening. And when you get into currencies as well, you can do exactly the same. We use the Hawkeye volume to show us what the setups, setups are on tick, and we also use it to show us what the tick uh, uh, it is on, on time frames. So use a 15-minute time frame. We can see this is the 15-minute volume. And remember, as you will say, there's no volume in, in, um, in Forex. Well, there is because you can run big data into the volume algorithm. And that will show you exactly where 
the buying and selling is going on. So we look at the buying and selling, we look at that algorithm that does 300 odd calculations, and this gives me my heads up. And I won't bore you with this too much, but this each color here, I know it looks spaghetti, is a different currency, and it's telling me what's overbought and oversold. So this brown coming up at the moment is the British pound. The red starting to come down is the Aussie dollar. Um, I would be interested in the pound Aussie. And um, all I have to do is come over here, click on this, and it'll load that chart for me. So there was that beautiful cell that came in here on the 15 minute, boom, down it came. We know that the market's dissipating. We want to see some green volume come in here now, and then we will get a position to the upside. And these numbers here show you how long something has been a trend for. So the pound Aussie has been in a 26, 15 bar down move. And that shows you in this volume will do it. Let me go back to the six ways the market market moves because I don't want to um, show you charts with all the Hawkeye indicators on because you will say, oh, all he was doing was showing you the indicators. I'm sh trying to show you exactly what the volumes are. So let me just come back and now we can go back to, that was the Euro, uh, the pound Oz. And we can see just on the volume algorithm that when this came in here, you can see that the 20 minute had gone, the volume had gone, the 40 minute had gone, and now you have your trend run down and you have some buying volume that's coming down the bottom here and you can see that the market starts to go sideways. And that is what occurs at the bottom of markets. You can see that time and time again. And let me just change all this to say 10 minutes so we can just see what the setup are. So if you're trading in TradeStation or in Ninja where, you, where you've got market analyst, you can just have this set and you can see the setups coming in. So there's a one bar, so there's a 10 minute new entry come in. Let's go and have a look. It's telling me, Euro New Zealand is telling me that there's a one bar to the downside, which is not elective, there is volume coming in here. And this volume is the buying volume, so that would not have been elected coming in on the bottom. Let's see if we can find another one. Here's a two. So let's look at the pound uh, there. That's, this has gone neutral, telling me that there should be a new trend coming in. Well, the bias is on my 40-minute, no demand volume, still buying volume on my 20-minute, bit of selling volume on my 10-minute, showing me that that was a termination up here of uptrend. And of course, in Hawkeye, We've got other indicators that show you when trends are expiring, et cetera, et cetera. And as I said to you, if I just show you this very quickly, and you don't have to buy any other Hawkeye indicator after you've got the volume, that will show you, and I will describe that in the two-hour webinar that I'm going to do for you. If we do this and we put on our trend, trend that's all green and now it's gone flat, and it's gone white here. Look at the wonderful trend down here. But you have to learn to be able to read the market. Now I know that, um, uh, Randy, just give me some stocks that people have asked for, would you please? Uh, First one was uh, Green Mountain, GMCR. GMCR. And what time frame was that the, they were requesting, do you know? They didn't list any time frames. It's just a... Okay. Well, stocks, you should, most of those you've got to go out in stocks, so let's, let's yep. go to 61.20, and let's miss a day. Um, this gives you the handle, so you can see that the daily is giving you the bias again to the upside here, pushing the market up. You can see it on the 120 minute. Here is the accumulation whilst the market is going through its accumulation sideways phase, pushing the market back up. Two bars of testing volume, but from that time on, two bars of testing volume overridden um, all the time here with this going on. And you can see that it's now gone in congestion up the top 
with low volumes, reds, greens, reds, whites, etc., which you would expect. And look at all these pivot yellow dots, highs here, telling you that that had also gone into congestion, etc., etc. Another one, Randy? Gold. GC? Futures country. Sure. Yeah, they want to um, look at a longer time frame, maybe daily. Okay. Well, it's pretty good on this one, but I'll, I'll do here's the daily. Let me make this daily and this one weekly. Okay. So here we go. Here's gold being accumulated down the bottom. Look over here to the daily chart. Let me just expand that out view. You can see that it's being pushed up. And this week, you can see that on the daily, it was the end of the trend up because distribution volume has come in one, two days. And this day will be distribution volume as well. So you've had four days of distri distribution volume at the top of that trend run. And that is a very, very good example, whoever asked me that question, of the accumulation price move with the weekly really leading the way. And then you've got to drill down and see what's happening. But there you've got it going down. Another one, Randy? JP Morgan, JPM. JPM. And uh, again, let me just, this is a 60 minute one D. This is for intraday. Oops. Um, So again, this up move here has not had any buying move, any buying moves uh, volume in this up move at all. So you would be taking on a huge amount of risk to have taken a long on this. Okay, you missed out a good trade. You missed out two bucks of trade. But you've got to remember, trading is all about risk. And the risk on this is too much. Now, at the end of this day, that will go green. Uh, so you could be looking at an extension of this after the 60 minute goes green volume. You've got the white volume behind it, neutral. That'll push itself up. But remember what I said, when we get a yellow dot, I expect a three, five, seven bar reversal. So one, two, I'm expecting another 60 minutes down, and then that push back up. Another one, Randy? TLT or TBT? You've got that awful noise on your static again. Let's get new headphones. Um, that gave neutral volume, relating volume going through. There was the push up. You've got that coming in on the 120 here. You can see that in the, this neutral volume here, the lower time frame, the 120, was showing you that it was being bought, accumulated, and that is what stood out of this trend up here. Right now, you have got this termination of, of the uptrend because you've got the red volumes and neutral volumes. Although the bias is to the upside, it's really slowed itself up. And one more, Randy, just one more. I like the uh, middle chart 120 there, where you've got the pivot low with the huge amount of accumulation volume coming in. It looks really yeah. nice, just to the left of that. There? The low. Right oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at that buying yeah. volume coming in. Pivot low, extension. That's signature. That's yeah. like, show me the back up the truck, baby. <laughs> Come on back down, as Randy said, the yellow dot comes in, but look at the volume that came in there. And it came in two bars before. Look, one, two, three bars before you had that accumulating volume, high volume, pushed itself out. Volume, right. Randy. Just one See, more. The volume, oh. is, the volume is leading the market, and it's showing you how the price is going to respond to that, and that's perfect. Uh, Starbucks, SBUX. S B U X. S S B X. Okay. Uh, 
again, we have on our daily, we've got the accumulating volume here. It's gone up. There's been a test on high volume here. The algorithm point, pointed this as selling volume that came in. And if you look over here, and I, when, when we teach class, Randy and myself, I coined a phrase called the tanker effect. You know, when markets are rising at a steep angle, it's rather like an oil tanker. When you put the brakes on an oil tanker, it takes five hours to close, uh, to five miles to stop. And it's a bit the same with volume and, 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 and market momentum. This is strong market momentum up here. But you can see, look at what happened. You've got your pivot high, your pivot low, no demand, little bit of buying volume, hasn't pushed itself up here. So until that highs now, this wouldn't be doing anything. We've got the buying, the inflation volume in this here. It still hasn't been enough for the professionals to take it through the top, either to risk buying coming into the market until it takes out the high of that bar there, it won't happen. So what I want to do, I'll just go through some of these over here. Uh, let me just trade, change these time frames around. This is what I trade mainly myself. This time frame. And all I do each day is just go through here. Nat natural gas. Um, I was speaking to one of my commodity friends. As far as I'm concerned, this is distribution coming in here. And uh, we should be seeing this market go down. I mean, it's, it's run itself up on the cold weather over in the States. Um, and it is highly extended. And uh, we should be getting a drop back down. And you can see the distribution volume on the daily coming through. And also look at this. That yellow dot is lower than that yellow dot. And that yellow dot is lower than that yellow dot. So you can just see that it's, 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 all, uh, it's all going round. So that's the setups that I'm looking at. And and that, that would be exactly what I'm looking for. So there we go. Now, let me just take you through the big markets that have been going on is, I mean, this will blow you away, live cattle. Look at the trend run on live, uh, live cattle. You know, stakes are going to get expensive, I can tell you that. And if we come and have a look at um, um, some of the softs, which I really like, coffee. This is very interesting. Coffee's had a huge run up here on, on, on the dailies. And really, please don't trade coffee unless you've got very deep pockets. But look at the distribution, the, the, the accumulation that came in here, took us right up to the top, and bang, there's the distribution. There's the end of the trend run. You don't need any other indicator if you know how to look at the DNA of volume signature on a market. And if we go and have a look at uh, at uh, sugar, you can see that too. There's the distribution after the trend run. And if we have a look at um, cocoa's quite interesting. Um, that's got it. Cotton, cotton's quite interesting. That's got it. And the beans, so it's going to soya bean that had a big run up. You can see accumulation volumes, etc. So I'm now going to go back to our start slideshow. And I just want to go through my closing thoughts. And we've done our questions. So my closing thoughts are that, you know, volume and price is over 20 years of research. It's 28 years of research that I've done into it. It really is the sophisticated way of trading. It shows you how to see trades clearly. It tells you how to perceive the markets, how to place your trades, the profits, and how to protect your position. So here's the webinar special. And I'm sorry this has been a disjointed presentation for you. I know that um, Morgan is going to ask me to record this tomorrow, and probably he will send it out to you. 
Uh, so I will try and do that tomorrow. And I'm also suggesting to him that maybe we can do regroup and do this again, but it was extremely disjointed. The Hawkeye volume indicator as a stand as a standalone indicator, we sell it for three hundred and sixty dollars. Private grouping, I charge a thousand dollars, five hundred bucks an hour. You're gonna have two hours, it's thirteen sixty. You're gonna get it for ninety seven bucks. And as I said, that is the cost of a dinner for two with a decent bottle of wine. And I can assure you, if you really learn how to use this indicator, you will really get to the financial success that you want. Um, Randy is posting the link into the chat. And uh, come and join the Hawkeye family. There'll be a two hour seminar. I think it's on the 29th, Randy. Um, that's correct. And it's on the 29th, and Randy and myself will be doing it, doing it. And you'll be seeing the volume indicator as a standalone indicator with just using a simple moving average. I will then also build up what the other Hawkeye indicators do, but it's not a sales pitch. It's there to educate you for the first sort of hour and a quarter, and then we start going into what everything else is. Uh, about Hawkeye. So I'd very much like you to join the Hawkeye family. We're not a hard selling company. We've been around 14 odd years doing this and we've got many, many hundred of light. So come and join us and thank you all very much. And I am so sorry it was so disjointed and wasn't anything to do with me this time. So I'm delighted. So thank you all very much. And I'm going to hand this back to you now, Morgan, to close up. Thank you. Guys, uh, thanks again, Nigel. We appreciate appreciate you being here, and Randy, and and all of you guys in the room for your patience. Obviously, we can't um, help when that kind of stuff happens, but you guys are awesome. Um, this is a one-time ninety-seven dollar fee uh, that you get access to. That we will send out a we'll send out a clean recording for you, um, Randy. If 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 you can help uh, with some of the questions, we would appreciate that. Uh, looks like if you have so if you have any questions, uh, definitely type them in for Randy or Nigel. Uh, it's March 29th from 8 to 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And again, here's the link, guys. We appreciate you guys um, taking the time to be here. Uh, yes, hey, Gene, how are you doing? So, yeah, let's see. Randy typed in the it's Trade Station MT4, Ninja Trader, and soon they're going to be adding e signal and multi charts. Um, Eileen, if you send an email, I don't have his phone number handy, but send me an email and I'll get it, get it to you. Um, and Randy, will the recording will it be recorded on the 29th? Yes, it will. That. Okay, so it will be recorded on the 29th. Yes. So there you go. And the replay of that, if people miss it, will be made available immediately afterwards as well. Yeah, we'll work on that. Uh, Evelyn, no, right now it's not on TOS. It's on um, TradeStation MT4, NinjaTrader. They're getting ready to add multi-charts and e-signal.